This is a 2002 Ford Ranger, four liter single overhead cam, full -wheel drive. It has a problem with a howling in the front end. One of the wheel bearings is bad. Has 137,000 miles on it. I'm gonna take it for a little test drive. Sometimes you can listen, hear where it's coming from. Sometimes you can't. Like the driver's side. I've jacked the front end up and give both wheels a spin. And this one's noisy, so that's a bad one. Take the 19 millimeter lug nuts off of it. I've got a jack stand under the control arm. This is a new replacement wheel bearing. I'm testing the ABS sensor, two wire plug in. It's got about 417 ohms, about 68 degrees. Just to make sure it's not open. This is the driver's side wheel bearing. I'm going to wire brush off this axle nut threads. Take the axle nut off. You can hold it with a brake or stick a screwdriver in a rotor if you don't have an impact. You know, somebody's been beating on that one. Yeah, initially an inch and a quarter, 32 millimeter deep well fits it pretty good. I sprayed some penetrating oil. Like I say, it looks like somebody's beat to have to see if the nut runs into that or not. If the head of that's mustreamed out too far, I'll have to take a grinder and grind it back down below the threads. I'm going to turn the steering wheel to the right. Take the brake caliper and hanger off. And then clip the ABS wire out of all of its holders. And unplug it. It looks like it made it off of it. If you're inclined to hit this, put a punch in the center. Or a press on it and press it on. This axle's loose, so I don't know why it was beat on. Maybe from another wheel bearing change, I don't know. got 14 millimeters holding the caliper on 15 is holding the caliper hanger on and I'll take the 15 millimeter hanger bolts off two of them just pull the whole assembly off hang your caliper from a bungee cord and check your brake pads. Looks like this needs to set. Go ahead and I'm going to disconnect the ABS cable now and spray some lubricating oil on this rotor and get it off of the hub. If the rotor gives you too much trouble, just put a bolt nut combo. I put a spacer, you can put one there if you want to save your rotor and spread the load out over the rotor. And screw the bolt in, the nut acts like the back and it pushes the rotor off of the hub. And just Once it starts moving it's it's all over and it'll come off. And there's a 5 16th bolt on the ABS wire mounted on the spindle up from the wheel bearing. That's nice, half the rotor is on the floor. That rotor is rotten. Only about half of it was being used to stop with on the back side. But go ahead and break those three 
8 millimeters, 5 sixteenths, whatever you want to use on it, loose and get that brake dust cover off of there. Splash shield, whatever name you want to give it. Now there's three through 15 millimeter headed bolts to take the wheel bearing off of this thing. Went ahead and sprayed some penetrating oil around the seam of the bearing. There's two of the three, and the third one's in the front. Go ahead and take those three out. This stuff you gotta look for too. The shock mounts come loose and it's been wearing a place in the control arm. Tighten that down if it don't break off. See if the other side's loose too. I turn the steering wheel to the left to get the front one out. Just turn your steering wheel real slow like you're in a parking lot with no power steering. I think it's still in the range of the ones that will blow the power steering pump cap off. If you turn it too fast and spew power steering fluid everywhere. I'm going to turn it real slow back straight. Start working on the wheel bearing. This is one of the rare few that isn't gold in there somehow. Get a break once in a while. Like that. Now you can spin that by hand and hear how loud it is. Oh yeah, that's the one. No sound, lots of it. It's rough. You can hear the busted bearings or damaged ones. Feel them. And nothing. Go ahead and clean this hole out. If it's scaly, rusty, take some 240 or 180 grit and scrape it down some. Then put a thin layer of grease on it and scrape the rust off of this between the mounting flanges. screwdriver and scrape that down to the next level of the metal. Put some grease on it. Clean that off. Watch that. It's got a seal back there too. Clean the splines off and put a thin layer of grease back on those. And slip the new wheel bearing with the ABS wire pointing forward and up to go into the hole over here. Take some brake cleaner and spray any debris you made in there out. And we'll put some grease back in this rubber seal behind this piece of metal here. Just lay some kind of just a little bit of grease deep enough to be level with that rubber, not too deep. Just to lubricate it. And put some grease in here and on the splines. Make sure all the particles are off the splines. Yeah, it looks like a wiener. Just enough. Put the new wheel bearing on there. Okay, I've got the wheel bearing up on there. Went ahead and started around the ABS cable. The wheel bearing bolts tightened down to 85 foot pounds. Make sure the axle comes through there nine tenths of the way. There's not a problem with the splines or manufacturing defect of some kind.
put the back brake plate splash shield on. Now these torque are nine foot pounds. They're the, they're a fine thread. Got them mixed up with the ABS cable. Little stubby screw. It's coming together. Go ahead and plug the ABS wire in. ABS screws fastened down. All these screws are fastened down. Now I'll stick the new rotor on the caliper back on it. And probably some new pads. Once you get your new rotor, compare it to the old one. And the diameter and the bolt holes and the center hole. The depth. And take some brake cleaner. Let's spray the protectant off of the rotor. Particularly the disc. Both sides. Watch your shop lights, it will eat them up. Make sure there's no debris in here. And it turns the shop lights white if you get over a spray on them. You don't want to get it on the lens part where the light comes out. I've mounted the rotor onto the wheel bearing. Making sure the back was clean with one lug nut holding the rotor. And I've put a thin layer of grease on the center hub part. Don't get any grease on your lug nut studs. Proper torque won't be set if you lubricate the studs. But I put a little grease on this center part so that the wheel and hopefully the rotor will be easier coming off next time. I'm installing new brake pads. Check your brake pads for uneven wear on both sides and both sides of the rotor on both sides of the truck. If one side's wore down more than the other, there's a problem with the caliper or the slides sticking. Uh, same goes with the other side, unless the rotor is really ate up on one side and not as ate up on the other. If rotors ate up, the pad's going to be worse on that side. But if it's good to go, go ahead and take a C-clamp or equivalent. Compress the caliper pistons back down into place. I went ahead and just loosened the cap on the reservoir for the master cylinder. Be sure not to let the caliper hang off the rubber brake hose. And insert the new pads. I went ahead and set the caliper hanger back on there and separated the caliper from the hanger so I can grease the slide pins and clean the tracks out for the brake pads just in case they're galled up. They're 14 millimeters holding the caliper on. Slide pins, make sure they're slide in and out freely. This one's starting to hang up so it needs cleaned and re-greased with silicone based grease so it don't swell the rubber up. Sandpaper any rust off these pins or put new ones in it. Brake cleaner out the slide holes and put new silicone based grease on it. And reinsert Push the rubber up on the nipple. These have flat blades that's got to lay on the caliper on these flat areas so that's not up on top of them. And I'll pull these shims up, Just scrape underneath of them out. So the new pads will fit in there good. Make sure they're sitting flat against the caliper and not up on that ledge down in there. I 
and put the bolts back in it. The 14 millimeter caliper bolts tightened to 24 foot pounds. And the 15 millimeter caliper hanger bolts on the spindle tightened to 85 foot pounds. I'm going to stick a punch in the rotor and tighten this axle nut down to 162 foot pounds. You can put some blue Loctite on it if you want, if you're reusing a nut. It's supposed to use a new nut on it. I'm going to pump the brakes a few times to make the pads grab the rotor. After compressing the caliper, the rotor make sure the rotor's not hung up that the caliper is functioning if you're reusing the old one I had to put a spacer under the lug nut because it just seemed like it wanted to bottom out before it held the rotor in place to keep the rust from falling down behind it let's stick the wheel on Look everything over and make sure you ain't got the brake line in a pigtail twisted up in a knot and the ABS wires routed correctly and plugged in and all your caliper bolts and hanger bolts are tight and that your wheel bearing bolts are tightened down and that the back brake plates in place and tightened down the ABS looks like it's good You might spin the rotor and make sure it didn't bend the shield. It's a pretty heavy duty shield, but it should be good. Check your center rim for flatness and gold up. Just clean up this area a little bit, scrape it off. Any significant damage, you need a new rim. Let's take the lug nuts on it, tighten them down to 100 foot pounds. The wheels back on, I went ahead and done the other side. If some excess brake fluid runs out of the reservoir, that's fine. Just clean it up. Keep all brake fluid off of the painted surfaces, it'll mess it up. Be sure and pump your brakes up, make sure you got a good pedal before you start the truck. And tighten your cap back down to keep the moisture out of the system.